There are two types of DCL in use today. The first is CPDLC DCL, which is a method of obtaining your departure clearance directly from air traffic control. CPDLC DCL availability is noted in the Datacom CPDLC box on the airport diagram shown here. It uses the FANS Datalink network and is only available in the United States using the KUSA logon address. The second type of DCL is ACARS DCL. This type of DCL availability is noted in the ACARS box on the airport diagram. It uses the ACARS network and is used outside the United States using the ATS pages on the MCDU. This type of DCL should not be confused with CPDLC DCL. This quick topic video will only be discussing CPDLC DCL and not ACARS DCL. Before requesting a DCL, it is important to have the filed flight plan entered into the FMS active flight plan. When ATC sends the DCL to the FMS, the clearance will either be a free text stating as filed, or if the clearance contains a reroute, a push to load flight plan modification will be included in the DCL. This push to load modification will only work if the FMS active flight plan contains the filed flight plan. To request the filed flight plan from your flight plan provider via AOC Datalink, ensure the origin and destination airports are populated. Press the nav button, then data link on one left, then flight plan on one left to view the data link flight plan page. Alternatively, this page may be accessed directly from the route page by pressing the data link flight plan request prompt on three left. The flight plan ID is pre-populated with the origin and destination. If a recall number will be used, it may be entered and upselected to replace this pre-populated entry. Regardless of which type of flight plan ID your flight plan provider requires you to use, once it is populated, pressing the send request prompt on 6 right will initiate the request for the filed flight plan. A scratch pad message, flight plan received, indicates the filed flight plan is now available for loading into either the active flight plan or a secondary flight plan. It is important to select 4 left, 5 left, or 5 right at this point to insert the received flight plan somewhere Otherwise, the AOC buffer will remain full and will prevent subsequent AOC data link requests from being fulfilled, such as a WINS uplink request. In this example, we'll select 4 left to apply the uplink flight plan to the active flight plan. This will create a modified active flight plan. Discontinuities after the last SID waypoint and prior to the first star waypoint are normal after loading the flight plan and do not need to be cleaned up prior to logging on to KUSA. However, the flight plan must be activated prior to logging on to KUSA. While uplinking the filed flight plan via AOC Datalink is a simple and commonly used technique, it is not required. The flight plan may be entered manually or loaded from a stored flight plan, etc. Whichever method you use, just be sure to activate the flight plan before moving on. To log on to KUSA, access the ATC logon slash status page by pressing the nav button. Then the ATC prompt at one right. Alternatively, the logon page can be reached by pressing the data link button, then ATC menu at five right. Type KUSA into the scratch pad, then upselect it to the logon to prompt at one left. Then press one right to send the logon request. At this point, the logon request was accepted. However, an active connection is not quite established yet. Depending on how early you log on to KUSA, the logon status may remain as accepted for some time before an active connection is established. Once ATC establishes an active connection, KUSA moves from one left to two right and is now the FAN's active center. Shortly after the connection is active, the DCL, or departure clearance, is received. The crew is alerted to the DCL uplink being received by an oral alert message, ATC, and a blinking ATC on the upper left corner of the PFD. 
the ATC icon will continue to blink until the pilot has either accepted or rejected the uplinked DCL. Regardless of what page is presently being displayed on the MCDU, any new CPDLC uplink message can be displayed by pressing the data link button. We'll press the data link button to view the DCL uplink message. The first thing to notice on the upper right is that the message has a status of open. This means that we have now viewed the message, it requires a response, and a response has not yet been made. Since this DCL is as filed, the entire message set will be free text. Carefully review all pages of the clearance. Upon reaching the last page, if you still need more time to review, select the standby prompt on two left. Otherwise, select Accept on one right to populate your response to ATC with a Roger. Free text is not currently in use in message responses while logged on to KUSA, and free text entries should not be included. Press Send on 6 right to send the response of Roger. The message is displayed again beginning at the first page. The message status has changed to Accepted, meaning the network, such as AirInc or CETA, has acknowledged our message response. Good practice is to once again advance through the pages and verify the response you sent. Here we have positive confirmation that our Roger response was sent and received at 1701 Zulu. Now that we have our departure clearance and expected runway assignment, we need to insert the departure runway into the FMS. In this example, since the Atomic 3 SID contained a common route segment, it was included in the active flight plan uplink from our flight plan provider. If the SID did not contain a common route segment, the SID would need to be added to the active flight plan here as well. Apply the selections. Clean up the flight plan by removing the appropriate discontinuities. Review the waypoints. and activate the mod flight plan. Our ATC cleared routing is now fully loaded into the FMS. Next, we'll look at an example of getting a DCL that is not as filed. We'll begin the example with the same filed flight plan already uplinked and activated to the active flight plan. Additionally, the KUSA logon request has been sent with the logon having been accepted. The connection to KUSA has now become active and the oral and visual alerts cue us that the DCL has been received. Press the data link button to view the new ATC uplink message. This time, the uplink message looks a little different than the previous example. The indicator that this DCL contains a reroute is the clear to message element. The fix contained in this message element, in this case, bucko, tells us that all fixes prior to bucko in the active flight plan will be deleted and replaced by other fixes when we apply or push to load this revised routing. Note that bucko is not the IFR clearance limit. The actual clearance limit will be contained in the free text of the uplink message. The first free text element is a reminder that this is a revised routing to bucko that needs to be loaded into the FMS. Next, we see the actual clearance. Cleared to Phoenix Sky Harbor, Atomic 3 SID, Tanner Intersection, Croin Intersection, Bucko Intersection, then rest of route unchanged. Climb via the SID, expect flight level 320 5 minutes after departure, departure frequency 127.4, squawk 4345, expect runway 26. On the last page of the uplink message, there are several additional selection options when the DCL contained a revised routing versus in the earlier as filed example. First is the addition of the reject option, which should be selected if the clearance cannot be accepted for some reason. The ATC clearance selection allows the pilot to view the push to load elements contained in the route clearance shorthand seen on page one. Select ATC clearance on five left. As expected, we see the same fixes that were listed in the free text portion of the uplink. Note that while the Atomic 3 SID was included in the free text clearance, it is not included as part of the loadable clearance. 
SIDs and STARs that are runway dependent are not included as part of the loadable clearance when included in a DCL. Press 6 left to return back to the ATC uplink message, then advance once again to the last page. We'll now push to load the revised routing by selecting the Apply prompt at 4 right. This creates a mod flight plan. Review it for accuracy, then return back to the uplink message. While you could press the data link button to again access the open uplink message, for illustration purposes, we'll access it via the nav button, then ATC on one right. Advance to the last page, then select Accept to populate the downlink response with a Wilco. There is a slight delay for the send prompt to be selectable on 6 right, and that is to force a review of the response before sending it. Press 6 right to send the response. The message status changes to Accepted once the Wilco response is acknowledged by the network. You'll notice a new fourth page was added to the message. Advance to the last page to confirm that the response sent was a Wilco. Press the Flight Plan button to return to the Flight Plan page. Activate the modifications, then press 6 left to access the departure page. Here we'll have to add the expected departure runway, runway 26, and reselect the Atomic 3 SID. Apply the selections, review the modifications, clean up the discontinuity, and activate the changes. The revised ATC clearance is now fully loaded into the active flight plan. This example just shown was an example of a partial reroute. However, if ATC issues a full reroute, the message element would say, cleared route clearance. With a full reroute, all fixes prior to the destination airport will be deleted and replaced by other fixes when we apply or push to load the full reroute. The methodology of reviewing, applying, and accepting or rejecting a full reroute remains the same as the previous partial reroute example. There is a third reroute uplink message that is not currently in use at the time of this recording, but may be in use in the future. This uplink message, at Bucko, cleared route clearance, is used to uplink a partial reroute after the fix listed in the message element. In this case, ATC is modifying the routing after Bucko. The methodology of applying this type of message is the same as in the previous example. Circling back a bit, we said that if more time is needed to review the clearance, specifically more than three minutes, a standby response should be sent to ATC. Once the standby response has been acknowledged by the network, the message still stays in an open status. Once you have decided if the clearance can be accepted or rejected, proceed as we just demonstrated by either accepting or rejecting the clearance and sending its respective Wilco or unable response. Lastly, unlike a pre-departure clearance, PDC, CPDLC DCL has the ability for ATC to uplink a new reroute clearance to the aircraft even after the initial clearance is received. A common scenario is during taxi out when weather moves in. PDC aircraft are asked to contact clearance delivery over voice for a revised clearance. Meanwhile, the DCL aircraft will get the revised routing automatically uplinked to the aircraft where it can then be pushed to loaded into the active flight plan, all without keying up the mic or picking up a pen and paper to copy down the new clearance. And while the PDC-equipped aircraft is on its third readback attempt of misspelled fixes and VOR names, the DCL-equipped aircraft is already on the takeoff roll.